The one thing I really enjoy doing is when I see an effect that I like, I think, wow, that looks pretty good, uh, it's just trying to recreate it. And this actually happened. I spotted one that was done by Harry, and it was in the Flickr group, and it was uh, a before and after, but Harry did it on a 3D canvas. And when I saw that, I thought, not done that before. I've got to have a go. So this is the method I came up with. We're going to start off as usual on the layers panel and we're going to use command J, control J to duplicate the background layer. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come across to the thumbnail of layer one. So come across to the thumbnail of layer one, double click. That's a shortcut to the layer style and by default it opens it on blending option defaults, but drop down. We're going to head for pattern overlay, click on this, come up to the side, click down, that opens up the rest of the patterns, and if you just click on the side by this little gear cog here, it's artist surface, that's what I've opened, click on this, click append, and it adds it to the list. Click down, and you can see there's the various sort of surfaces that you've got to work with, there's some fantastic ones here, and uh, just take a look as well, just drop down the opacity, you get a little bit of an idea of how it's going to work but one of my favorites has got to be this one. And being as it is a 3D canvas, we're gonna give it a canvas look. So there it is. Now that's with the scaling at 100%. Let's take the scaling up to, not as far as that. So yeah, 187 looks pretty good like that. Let's drop the opacity down even further. Probably gonna to go to single figures, something like uh, that there looks about ideal. We're on 9% and we got 187. Take up a little bit, drop down a little bit. Yeah, 168. Click OK. Doesn't matter. Don't forget, it is a layer style, so we can come back in. We can adjust it if we need to. Right, let's fold that up out of the way. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to produce a side for our canvas. Now, to do that, we need to go to View. Dropping down, we've got Ruler. Command R, Control R is the shortcut to opening up the ruler. There it is. Once you've got the ruler, if you just look at your picture, this is going to be the sort of the front face of the canvas and we need to produce a side to it. So just take a look, look at the width and then grab down on the side there. Well, wait until your hand or whatever tool you're using turns into a little arrow. Now you can click down, now you can pull it out and something like that there, just look at it in relationship to the width. There. I'm just going to take it back a little bit. There's no magic numbers. It will vary on the size that you've got and something like that. Yeah, that should be pretty good. Right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I've got the hand tool selected, so I just need to press Alt or Option, just popping out to that area there. We're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool. No, that's not elliptical. That's a rectangular marquee tool. Get it right. Drag it over the picture like this. You'll notice the way it snaps to the guide. That's just what we're after. The next thing we're going to do is bring your cursor inside. So bring your cursor inside that selection. Right click. Right click. Go to layer via cut. That's layer via cut. What this will do is it'll cut and it'll paste this to a new layer clicking on it. There it is. Let's go to view. Let's go to clear guide. Let's use command R, control R, which will now hide the ruler. And there it is. If we just switch off the background layer and if we just switch off this, there's our new layer there. And if I switch that on, switch that off, there it is. Job done. Right. While we're at it, let's come to our background layer. Working on our background layer, we're going to switch off layer one. With our background layer, we're going to fill this with white. This is our background color here. Any other colors, press D on the keyboard. So there's white. Now a nifty little shortcut is to use control backspace. That's control and backspace on a PC. It is command delete. That's command delete on a Mac. We'll fill the background layer with white. Great stuff. Right, going to make this bigger as well. Don't forget, we've got white as our background, so we're just going to pick up the crop tool. Now with the crop tool, I'm going to drag this down to that sort of area there would be pretty good. As soon as I release it, you'll notice it turns white because that's our background color that we've got. That's ideal. Coming to the sides, pressing down Alt or Option, we're going to pull it out just to give us more you know, space as well. Again, no magic amount. We can always crop it down later. Once we're happy, just double click to apply. There it is. We can switch this back on. Job nearly done. 
let's click on layer 1. I'm just going to scroll down so we can actually see it. Pressing V on the keyboard is going to give me the move tool. So let's just move this down into position. That looks pretty good like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. So use Command J, Control J to duplicate layer 1. We've now got layer 1 copy. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on this and we're going to call this bottom right. Pressing enter or return. I'll tell you what, while we're on this one, we're going to call this one, guess what? Top. Got it. Right, coming to the bottom layer here. We've got the move tool. I'm going to press shift on the keyboard and I'm just going to drag this down until it comes to the bottom of the image like that there. Now if we just zoom out a little bit using Alt or Option, now at the moment it looks like that, which isn't particularly accurate, is it? No. But if we come up to Edit, we're going to drop down to Transform, we're going to go to Flip Vertical. Flipping Vertical will now match it up. There it is, just the effect we were after. Zooming in a little bit, you'll notice the way it's joined up nicely. I've got the Move tool. So all we need to do is press the arrow key, that's the down arrow key. So pressing the down arrow key once there, I just want that little bit of a gap. Don't want too much, just a little bit, something like that would be pretty good. So that's actually two sort of presses on the downward facing arrow key. Right, zooming out using Command-0, Control-0 to go to fit on screen. Dropping down, first of all, make sure you've got the bottom one there, dropping down. Before you click on the top layer, press Command or Control. So press Command or Control, now click on the top layer, both are highlighted. Using Command T or Control T will now put the Transform tool around both the layers. Bring your cursor inside. You've got the black arrow ahead. If you right click, we're going to go to Perspective. With Perspective, we're going to click on the side here, we're going to reduce it down like this. That looks pretty good, something into that area there. We can also move it around. You'll notice two layers, they're all working in perfect harmony, in perfect synchronization. And if I just right click again, I'm going to go for free transform, just going to bring that in a touch or two, because with the perspective it does tend to sort of just alter the uh, actual width a little bit. That looks pretty good like that, double clicking to apply. There it is. We're getting there. Right, let's come to the side. Let's fold that up and come to the side, which is this one here. I'm going to move the stay, <laughs> clicking on the right layer. OK, moving it down. Don't you love it when that happens? Moving it down, let's take a look. Let's zoom in. So I'm going to use Command Spacebar, Control Spacebar. In we go. Just moving it down into this area. This is going to be the side. If I just move it into position, you can see the way that's looking. Now I want to give this a little bit more depth. I want to make it look as if it is on the side. So we need to darken it down a little, little bit. An easy way of doing that is to use Command J, Control J. So it's Command J or Control J. We've duplicated it. And we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. Now with multiply, we're just going to drop the opacity down and you can see the way now we're beginning to get that sort of wrap around that 3D canvas look. That looks pretty good like that, dropping it down just a touch or two further, something into that area like it. Right, we want to merge this layer down with this layer here. Now if you come up to layer, drop down to merge down, which you can't see because it is off the screen, use that or use command E or control E, that merges it down. Job done. Let's duplicate this layer again using Command J, Control J. So we've duplicated it again, and we're going to come to Edit. We're going to drop down to Transform. We're going to come across, and we're going to go to Flip Vertical because this is going to be for the bottom one. So I'm going to click on this, I'm going to drag, place that down into position like that. But let's switch it off so we don't get confused. Let's work on the top side here so we can double click. We can put in Top. That would be pretty good. And we can even drag this layer down. So we're going to grab hold of it. We're going to drag it down till we get that line coming across. You see that solid line between the top and the bottom there? Releasing it, in it goes. So it's now directly above top. Right, next. Let's zoom in a bit closer again into that area like that so we can see exactly what's going on. Using Command T, Control T on this top side. Bring in our cursor inside, you've got the black arrow ahead. If we right click, we're going to go for perspective. Now with perspective, we're going to click on the top corner. We're going to drag it in. You'll notice the bottom corner coming up as well into that sort of area, something like that there. That's the angle I'm looking for. And if you right click again, going for free transform. 
Now with free transform, just bringing that in, and as we bring it in, something like that should be pretty good. Just keeping that on the vertical. It's all done very much by eye. Yes, you could set up grids, you could do all sorts of things, but do it by eye. You, you get a little bit of a feel for it. Double click into apply. Like the way that's looking. Got a nice sort of edge to that as well. Yeah, really pleased with that. Okay, let's scoot down to the bottom one. Right, come in. We're going to switch on the bottom one. There it is there. Come into it just to make things easier. We're going to call this bottom. Not that it makes any difference, but there it is. Right, now we're on our bottom one. We're going to use Command T, Control T again. And if we just zoom down a little bit, going to come to the side before we start off. I'm just going to bring it in till it lines up with this one. You notice the way it's snapped in place there. Right, if you right click again, we're going to go for perspective. And this time we're going to pull it out like this. And as we pull it out like this, I'm going to bring it up. And I'm just going to, the, the bottom's going to come out as well. I'm not too worried about that because we will, will be losing the bottom of our side, if that makes sense. That looks pretty good. So I'm just double click into apply. Yes, I've maintained that white gap around there. That wraparound effect looks pretty good using Command-0, Control-0. And this is what I meant by the bottom there. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Right, once we've done that, what we can now do is we can come to the bottom. We're on the bottom layer here. We're going to merge this down with bottom, so we're going to use Command-D, Control-E, dropping that down. Let's go to top. This is the top side here. You notice there's a little bit of a gap as you zoom in, though that disappears. Using Command D, Control E, that's now dropped in place as well. Great stuff. Right, Command 0, Control 0 to go back up to fit on screen because the next thing we're going to do is on the bottom layer, so working on the bottom layer here, we're going to put in a layer mask. In goes the layer mask. Black is the foreground color. We're going to pick up the gradient tool. We've got the linear gradient. That's the first little icon in. There it is. That should work pretty well. And I'm going to come into this sort of area. I'm going to pull it up on the diagonal. So something like that. Let's see how this is going to work. Releasing it through it goes. And just taking it a little bit further. So bringing my cursor in, lifting it up. Again, placing it on the diagonal, lifting it up. And just a little touch more, I think. Well, just, no, that's overdone it. So using Command Z, Control Z to undo that. Coming in and just lifting that up again. That should be about it. One thing you can do is if we click on the image, so we're now working on the image before we were working on the mask. You can see the framework coming around there. Now we're working on the image itself is we can go to filter, we can go to blur, we can go to Gaussian blur. And with Gaussian blur, we're going to blur it by not that amount because that would be silly because you can't actually see it. We're going to drop it down so we got that sort of amount there. What we got? We got 7.8. This will depend on the file size you're working with, and we're going to click OK to that. Coming up, we're now going to come to the opacity and we're going to drop the opacity down, and there it is. Right, there's the start of our 3D canvas effect. Looking pretty good, pleased with the way that is. And uh, in the next part of the video, we're going to take a look at creating a background to work with that. So please join me in the next part of the video.